for me, I will not, I will not say that because. Hello, Mr. Ahmed. Hello, Mr. Ahmed. You're welcome. It's a pleasure. Great. You are wrong, Margaret. Yeah, Ralo. 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 That's great. So, how did you get the name Ralo? And you got it there, the seven star general. <laughs> <laughs> back, back in the high school, you know, back in the high school days, my name was Rollins, right in the high school. But everybody couldn't pronounce Rollins, you know. I think it was too long, right? So, they just used to cut it short and say Ralo. So I feel everybody was comfortable with calling me Ralo and it was just a name that even came before like I became a producer, you know, the start the startup movement. So I got the name from high school and it was just like a nickname to Rollins. Because you know I was named I was named after Jerry Rollins, former president of Ghana. Okay. And so I got the name Rado from Rollins. Great. Because it's the short way of calling running to my room. Okay. So, you sound British. Somebody would want to know. Did you, you know, um, maybe have you lived in Ghana, Nigeria? Do you have some connections? I mean, something. I'm from Africa, the United States of Africa. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, Africa. Yeah. But you know, like, originally, Rado is a Nigerian producer, but right now I'm based in LRB and I've been in LRB for a while. So I'm surprised that I'm sounding that I'm supposed to be mixed up because you know the Colombian and the British English. Everything combined. Yeah, yeah, sure. So are you a full time producer or you have other things you are into? I'm a producer, artist, I mean everything about music. Because you know music is an art. So I produce, I write, sometimes I create, sometimes I just infuse. Like I don't create, I don't have to create, I just infuse some from something. You know, because you know, production is wild. When we get when we get to that, we'll talk about that. Okay. So the, now the question that follows is that whether you received a formal education, a formal training. Uh, you just came to the stage based on applicants. No, no. Nah, nah. See, I was fortunate to go to one of the best schools in Nigeria. We had our computer lab, you know, and I used to go out there. While others are, you know, on the computer learning different stuff, I'll be out there with my earphones in my ear and be doing my my beats. And nobody understood why I was doing that because this the whole music thing started when I was very young, but I wanted to be a producer also, you know, because I, I could play the drums. I could play the drums perfectly, and the keyboard, and other, you know, other equipment, right? So I wanted to be a producer. Okay. And I never had the opportunity to go because I was still at school that, by then. You know, I was very young by then. So I needed to start creating beat. So what I used to do, I just go in the in the computer lab, why others are you know doing different things, others are reading about different novels out there in my FL studio. That's what they call FL Studio, you use it to produce. So I had it, I had the demo version from the internet, I'll produce the beats, you know, by myself, and without nobody showing me, I just know how to put the beats together. You know, with the help of YouTube videos, you know, we watch, we watch some YouTube videos, okay? So, so that means you were self-trained? Self-trained. I would say self-trained. You know, we are Africans now. And where I found myself, your, your parents couldn't really believe in your dream easily because they want for you to go to school. You understand? They want you to go to school, get those grades first before they start investing in your talent. But I was self-made because I believe in myself and I know what I was doing. Even if I was in school to get the grades, those grades was my mommy and daddy. So at the end of the day, I was still going to do what I want to do. So I would say, I was self-made. I started, I started training myself from 
high school days. So after 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 giving the understanding on how to go about producing music, firstly let's look at the environment there in Nigeria. How welcoming was the environment? How supportive were those around you? You know to help put you to certain level. I can see in Nigeria the music industry today is money. So no matter who you are or what you're doing as a career, you you have to have somebody that that believes in you. They want to invest. Music is all about investment. Did it's you get investment. Did you get some somebody of that kind? At the point, I have to work on myself to get an endorsement deal. Is is out there is like a competition. Nobody is nobody is supposed to do it for you. You're supposed to do it for yourself, right? So. I just have to prove myself. Keep going for competitions. I think mean, Nigeria they have producers competition, upcoming producers competition. Where you go, they, they have like different different studios. You just go there, produce your beat, and everybody listens to it right right there and there. So you will use that platform to get an endorsement deal because you want to go somewhere. It's your career. You're building it up. So I managed my way. I got an endorsement deal. Uh, I was in a you know state of the art equipment studio. When I mean state of the art, you know what I'm talking yes, about. A, a hard modern style. Hard modern standard studio where you don't find no downloaded software. Sorry to say that. At the end, like, that's what we do. We use downloaded software. But in Nigeria, when I was doing the music stuff, all the all the standard studios they have their software that they pay monthly subscription for. And those software helps a lot when you're using it to produce. So what, what drove you to Liberia? In other, I mean, you've come to Liberia. Like, so that's, 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 that's what I'm driving at. Understand that. So I got myself an endorsement deal. That when I was up at a certain level, I was on a different level, right, producing. And somebody came to Liberia. Somebody came from Liberia to Nigeria, and link up with my boss. My boss had a studio, had a whole building. So when he got linked up to the to the to the guy, they, they he start telling the guy that he wants somebody to come over to Liberia. This is what we are facing. This was like after the war. I'm talking about 2000. 2003. Yeah, 2000, 2008, 2009. Okay, okay. And that's that's the period I'm talking about when Eco started coming up, right? So somebody wanted to change the Liberian sound. Somebody was not comfortable with. A particular song somewhere, and he wanted you know somebody outside to come in and have his own view and you know try and see what he can do out of the hip hop music called Konopa. Right? So he talked to my boss and asked me to come to Liberia. I, at first, honestly, let me be frank, I didn't want to come through because when when I, when I went to the studio and my boss told me you are going to Liberia next week, I went on Google. Google library on YouTube, all I could see was the war videos, all those terrible videos, terrifying videos. So as for me, I said no, I don't want to go there. So my boss kept pushing me, he said, no, you have to go there, I'm sending you there. You are the best person out there. I said, I'll go. Finally I accepted the call, came over to Liberia. And when I came over to Liberia, I was working for Studio 57. By then it was a, it was the biggest studio out here in LRB. During that time, if you could tell, they had all the best artists in the record level. And, I mean, so, that's so, how I came over to Liberia. But as a young person, what was the reaction from your family? Did they welcome the idea that you should come to Liberia? Yeah, we you know. Unfortunately, I'm an orphan, so I don't really have a lot of family members, you know, to put down restrictions. I decide for myself because I lost my mom and dad when I was very young. So I'm being Okay, then let's come back to the business. Uh, it's good that it, the, the public people know you, people yes. know your personality and understand exactly who you are, you know, your origin and whatever. Definitely it's not about discrimination, it's not about anything. No, no. But it's good to know you. It's That's the most important thing. So I'm let's, that. let's come to the business. Uh, what is it that every music should have before it is actually sold? You know, what are those basic elements that are important that every music should have in your own production uh, or understanding? 
Okay, as for me, I will not, I will not say a lot because nowadays the way music is gearing, the way the, the, the face the music industry is taking outside Liberia, in Liberia and everywhere, it's like things are changing and you have to you know, follow the new age of making music. So basically I would say anything a good music should have out there is a message first message every music has its own message if your music don't have its own message i don't think it's a music and let me when i talk about message i'm talking about messaging different different dimensions some people got the drugs message some people got the stop the break message some i mean every music you listen to in the world market has its own message so if you have a good message, if you want to preach, everybody has their liberty for preaching whatever they feel like to preach because it's a free world. You don't really detect what kind of music is, is suitable and what kind of music is not suitable. Because nowadays, you can just laugh on a beat. It's all about the drive of the beat. Another thing I want to make mention of is the beat. If the beat is not punchy, something in that beat should be attractive Talking from the producer aspect, you know, of music, something in that beat should be attractive. And if you don't have the beat, if you don't have the beat, and you don't have the message, I don't think it's music. You mentioned the message that every music should have. You mentioned beat and other components in order for it to be sold. In your career, since you've got into it. Have you had some difficult times producing a music? Yes, of course. And how I are you able to deal with such situation? Wow. I mean, you are the producer, you are the god of any sound that you create. Right? I just want to believe that some kind of way human being can go a hard time too. Some kind of way before you arrive at what we see, right? So, it all depends on how focused you are. That's why anytime I want to produce a song, I lock my doors and lock myself in. It's something spiritual that's about to take place. You have to close your windows in so you can feel your inner spirit like you have to drag yourself away from the noise. That's why you don't make music in a noisy environment. It's always a cool environment. So you drag yourself and you focus, you know how to maneuver. Yeah, it's all about showing that you are the god of any sound you are creating. So, I mean, God will not have difficulty in creating something I don't think so. Lavi General has its own challenges, and that is uh, also applicable to everything we get ourselves involved into or with. Even what you are doing, like the production of music or as a producer, you have challenges. So, dealing with some of these critical times that come your way is something that makes you you know somewhat special how have you been able to get through or continue to deal with some of these things and keeping your head high up not losing focus on what you are called for i mean it's not easy that's why you know in, in the developing industry you need a record level I'm not saying you don't have self-producers. Self-made producers are just beat productions. They just make beats. You don't get yourself involved in recording and mixing. You know, there are different stages to bring out, bringing out the song from the studio. Some are just there to produce the beat. But for us out here, especially I want to speak for because I know other other producers work out here in Nigeria, right? For us out here, you have to be a jack. All trade. You have to do everything. You have to play the beat. You have to record. You have to mix. You have to master. So, in these cases, how money to manage to maneuver them is is very difficult. Area. It's very difficult. Area. That's why you go, you go, you go, you go. When you listen to the Liberian sound right now, you can tell that the studios are everywhere. You could tell 
from the time the studios were not many in the, in the new, new days, I could tell that the studios are actually many because anybody can just walk in a, any studio in the corner and just do his thing and go put it on radio. But the real music always speaks for itself. Any music you spend time behind it, always, it always speaks for itself. And the process of getting it done is not always easy. It's not always easy. Like I'm speaking from experience. Like the question we ask, how you manage with all these difficulties, you still keep in your hair. It's not always easy. That's why we are interceding for all the top producers and, and, and artists in Liberia should be in a record level. Because it will help them. It will really help them. Okay, so what are some of those songs you've contributed to in terms of helping to produce them? Like some songs that are out there, the, the typical Liberian songs we listen to in music. What are some of them that you've contributed to in producing? I've produced a lot of new songs since I came in the Liberian industry and how to present them. And you know, when you talk about heat, I just did a song in case that never posted it up. I was happy. I said, wow. What's the song? What's the title? What, 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 you know, Bobby Rock did a song and he did a, a cover to a Kiss Daniel song. I produced it. So the following morning, I just woke up, Chris, Chris Brown post, uh, um, Kiss Daniel posted it. I was cool with it. So I feel it was a blessing that a bigger artist like that would listen to my production and have it on his platform. I know nobody knew about it, that I was the one behind the track. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of tracks so for things. No, one of the Liberian songs that when MTV Bass came out was produced by Rado and that's me. So, and you know, in the industry I've been contributing a lot of these songs. I can I can mention all, but you know, if you follow me, if you if you want to know more, you can come and see some of the E songs out there too. Okay, I bring you to the question of money. Uh, you are a producer. Uh, so what can you tell us? Being a producer in Liberia, does it, does it bring money? Are you making money? Yeah, that is it gets, gets back to what I mean by all the artists should be on the record level because everybody makes money differently. There's no fixed amount in Liberia out here like when you go out, out there in different countries and say, oh, to get this audio, you have to pay this amount. To get this other sound, you have to pay this amount. So, I hear yeah, everybody does make money different. As for me, I'm, I'm in a record level, so I get my paycheck, I get my money at the end of the month. I don't know whether they make their money or they don't make their money. I'm there for, as well as you have me out there, you're making money, that's why you have me out there. So, is it actually to your satisfaction as compared to if you were like in Nigeria or somewhere else? No, I will answer that question. I would say yes and no. Okay, I can just explain it. Yes and no. Why I would say yes and no is because the quality the Nigerians are producing, we are not producing that quality. And to produce those quality, you have to be paying like monthly subscriptions to some of the software you use. And in Liberia, we don't have that standard. We, we are not in that standard. That's why all the softwares we use, they are downloaded softwares. I'm getting back to that again. Because I think if you want our music to cross borders, if you want our music to go out there, we should think about the quality. The quality of the, of the music that you're about to put out. Will it compete with the Nigerian songs when it gets out there in the speakers? Will it compete with the Ghana songs, South African songs, Tanzania songs? You have to do that if you are ready to cross in the culture to international. But have, have you brought out any suggestion, for example, with, uh, to the label you're working with, or maybe some other friends, where well, there's a need for us to invest into this in, in order to be able to get the version mm -hmm. of the the you know the software that other people are using out there? Have you been able to bring such to the table? Some people are investing. There are some librarians, there are some librarian music that we produce under the softwares. And when you listen to it, it does compete with the international. But the problem, 
they, it's not it's not like a regular kind of thing out here. It should be a regular kind of thing. We should be looking at the bigger quality, looking at the international level, looking at the competition out there when it comes to production. I bring you to the a picture you, uh, we say you talk with whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> What's the special connection between you and whiskey? I mean, as a producer, when whiskey came to Liberia, you know, I was hard. I was hard. Uh, I was on the show. I had my artist on the show. And I feel it was, I needed a meat whiskey because it's our career, right? Alongside, as we go along, we meet bigger people, you know, bigger pictures, more than us, and talk to them and, you know, learn from them too. I mean, it's a culture. So when I met with whiskey, I guess you know how it works. I didn't even only take pictures with him. I play football together because he liked, he liked the sport too. He likes soccer. He asked me, do you play soccer? I said, yeah, I do play soccer. He said, I went inside the hotel with my brother football. We played together. I mean, he's a friendly kind of person. So I met him, told him about the library industry, and let him know that he needs to future one of librarian's artists too in one of his projects. He was laughing about what was, what was his reply? Yeah, he was just laughing because, you know, by then when he came to Liberia, he wasn't even star boy. He was still under EME, the formal level before star boy. So, he wasn't all that big, but right now, I think he, he might see need of doing a song with the library artist because Throughout, during the years, you know, the years that passed by, we've been able to like make one or two librarian like, music to play out there in their platform too. And they know that there's a country called Liberia and they're doing library like, music because, I mean, Whiskey was out there when Dench from Liberia was called in MTV Days Award. So I believe uh, the, each time they're in these pictures and they see Liberia, they know that here yeah, there's a country called Liberia and music is going out there. So, that's so, what so what's your own impression? Do you think that the Liberian musicians are now doing their best and actually getting to the top that will lead them to collaborating with it's the investment. The rest of the guys? Okay. Everything is investment. That's why I said earlier on in the interview that you need somebody that will invest a certain amount to your career to grow faster. When you, all these things you see, the video, whiskey, out there is money. These guys they fly like every weekend from one country to another. Liberian artists will not afford that if somebody don't invest. So I think when that's the that's the part of the, 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 the game we are losing our investment. That one is not part of the librarian I, I don't know what to call it. It's not even in the book that they should invest. That could be responsible for killing the industry, though. Of course, because you have great, great talent. You have talent. I don't want to start calling some talent. You know what I'm talking about. You have talent that could compete with these international artists, that could rub shoulders with them, that could do things equally with them. But the things that distinguish you and me is the investment. Me and you, we from the same father, right? And your, 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 and our father invested in you to be a medical doctor, send you abroad, you go out there, you learn your studies in abroad and graduate and come down. And my father rather invest in me in the country. Do you think me and you will be in the same level? It's not possible. You can never be in the same level. You are exposed more than me. So that's the exposure we're looking for and his investment that can take it out there. Do you know how much to play my video on MTV base every day? It's money. These are entertainment houses that are commercial houses too. They want to make money with their airtime. So you have to keep paying. It's not all about the talent, it's the investment. I just want to say that. It's not all about the talent, it's the investment. Rallo, you're interesting. Definitely. Uh, your information you provide in like helping diaspora in Africa understand a lot about your own transition from the community you came from to the Liberian community and how much you are learning and how much you've come to also inspire into a couple of friends who come around you, most especially in the musical industry. Okay. Now, you you came from a society like 
I believe in a goosey soup. <laughs> they, they learn, they, they, they eat a lot of, uh, you know, pound of yam and all of those stuff. I know, not necessarily just Ghana alone, even Nigeria and all of that. But you came to Liberia, you have a different kind of society. Uh, that people have their own sort of choices when it comes to food. How have you been able to adapt to that? Uh, you just said it. Uh, I came from an environment that would have a lot of food. So I came in an environment that has selective kind of food. What should I do? <laughs> I behave like them too. I eat whatever they eat. Uh, you know, I'm that kind of person that even if I travel anywhere and you guys are eating snake, I'll eat snake. As far as it doesn't kill human beings. So, as I adapt, I adapt to any food. First of all, since I came to that bread, not the first food I ate. No. Not the first food. No, you do Unless you tell me. Uh, cassava leaf. Oh. And we don't eat cassava leaf in Nigeria. Yeah. Okay. Nigerians don't eat cassava leaf. Why? They say, they say it's for goats. You know, the goats, they feed on cassava leaf a lot. So, when I came to Liberia, they said, we do eat cassava leaf. That means, what happens in Kenya also happens in Nigeria. I mean, Nigeria, because a friend from Kenya told me once, back about six, seven years ago, that when we were eating cassava leaf, and the person said, oh man, this one here, you don't eat it. But later he ate it, and he yeah. fell in love with it. And right now, He's eating it in Kenya. I spoke with him the other day. He said, Yeah, I'm enjoying my cassava leaf, which is so strange in the environment. Of course. That's the first soup I ate because it was strange. Like, oh, we don't, we don't eat that soup, we give it to the goats. So, what's, what's the best dish since you came now that you have fallen in love with? Jibi. You, you love it. How frequent do you eat Jibi? I love Jibi. How frequent do you swallow Jibi? Like, I eat Jibi, like, I eat Jibi almost like twice a week. Yeah, twice a week because you know it's expensive in the capital city. GB is very expensive, but I think I like it because it reminds me of the African culture. I mean, you know now, I have to wash your hair, take the thing with your hair. That's a real African man. Let's give it back. Uh, so that uh, as we draw close to this, uh, I mean, let's come a bit to your social life. You are in the country. I think you got a girl here. Yeah, of course. Good. Yeah. How are you coping with it? I got girls. Girls! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, it's been a nice time having you on this uh, platform. This uh, this is Diaspora in Africa. We are pleased that you honored our invitation and look forward to more interactions. Yeah. Really, it was nice. It's a privilege coming up on your platform. I appreciate you guys and thank you, you know, for putting in one more time for like real music. Uh, okay, so before maybe you close up now, the question is the social media platforms you can be easily reached. Uh, you can reach to me at Rallo the Seven Star General, that's my page. On Instagram, the same thing, Rallo the Seven Star General. And Twitter, the same, Rallo the Seven Star General. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, so Jelly Rallo. Thank you. You're great, Rallo. Yeah.